In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can be able to vibe code our UI design using our Gemini Code Assist. Now, here's basically the agenda of this video. We're going to first set up the Gemini Code Assist following the official documentation onto our Visual Studio Code. And then we're going to take a look at how we can be able to vibe code a UI design from an image. And for the image here, we're not going to create a UI from Figma. We're basically going to find UI inspirations or templates from different tools here, which I'll show you in this video. And to improve our productivity for vibe coding UI design, we're also going to introduce the AI version control here. This gives us the flexibility to control the code design versions that's generated by the AI inside of our code editor. And then after we have those tools right here, we're gonna iterate on our UI with AI vibe coding. And then here, I'm also gonna show you a couple tips on how you can be able to write better prompts and also how we can be able to troubleshoot our Gemini API daily request limits. And eventually we're gonna convert that index.html and CSS styling into a Nest.js fully functional JavaScript application. Now, if you found value in this video and want to see more content like this, please make sure to consider subscribe and like this video. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so first thing first, we're gonna get started with the Gemini Code Assist. Now, unlike the Gemini Code CLI, which lives in the command line interface, this one is going to be located inside of our code editor. So in this case, there are two options. One, we can be able to install this using Visual Studio Code. And the other option is we can be able to install this in JetBrains IDE. So for simplicity for this video demonstration, we're gonna proceed with the Visual Studio Code installation for the Gemini Code Assist. And basically to install this, we're just gonna click this. This is the extension name for the Gemini Code Assist, where we can install this on our Visual Studio Code. So come back to Visual Studio Code. You can see I have already have this extension installed, but if you haven't had this installed, we can just click on the extensions here and paste the name Gemini Code Assist. And this is gonna be where you can install Gemini Code Assist onto your Visual Studio Code Editor. So once you install this, uh, we're just gonna click on the Gemini Code Assist chat here. And here we're just gonna sign in with a Gmail account. So it's gonna prompt us to open the external website. We're just gonna copy the link. So we're gonna choose an account to sign in. And here we're just gonna click on sign in. And here we have successfully authenticated for Gemini Code Assist. So back to Visual Studio Code, you can see that we have Gemini Code Assist available on the chat. Now, if this is your first time set this up, if you were to open the command panel here, open the user settings for the preference. If you were to scroll all the way down, you can see I have also added the Gemini Code Assist update channel insiders. This is gonna allow you to have the agent toggle here. Once we have this, then we can have the agent mode turn on. For example, if you were to have this toggled and make sure to restart your Visual Studio Code after you set that up. And now if I were to do slash, you can see we have a list of MCPs, the tools, right? And if we were to just do the tools, you can see that these are all the tools that Gemini offers and the agent mode is gonna use those tools to perform actions. So it can be able to save memories, write files, read files, be able to search content from files, right? So these are all the tools that agent can perform. And here at the bottom, we can also add context. So let's say we have multiple files in our uh, directories. We can also include it inside of context items here. And then if we wanna create a new chat or check the previous history, we can click here to see the past histories for the chats. And if we wanna start a new conversation, we, and we can click here to get a new chat. All right, so that's gonna be the Gemini Code Assist setup. So now let's take a look at how we can be able to use Gemini Code Assist to vibe code our UI design. And to do so, there's two tools that we can be able to use to find our UI inspiration. First one is called mopping.com where we can be able to find inspirations for real world mockups. The other option is dripple.com where we can be able to search for all kinds of UI templates that we can copy from for web designs, for mobile apps, for all kinds of use cases, we can be able to find it here. And just for simplicity, we're gonna take this design as an example for web messenger concept. And because you can see here that we have the chat list, the chat histories, right? Which we can see that on the left. So we have the chat list, we have the chat conversation history, and also on the right, we have the chat details. So we're gonna take this as an example, right? We're gonna save this image and then be able to use that in the code assist. All right, so once we save the mockup, which you can see here, uh, in the Visual Studio Code, I have moved the mockup image in the current directory, which is the mockup.png. And then inside of the Gemini Code Assist, you can see that I have toggle the agent mode. And for the context, I will select the current file. And basically, here's the prompt, which will basically instruct the Gemini to be a senior front-end engineer and designer. And their task is to design and build the user interface for a responsive chat messaging web applications. And it's going to build based on the design reference that we provide. The final UI should adapt the visual style and also the image itself for the web applications, right? And then the fonts, basically this is the font style and this is the color styles and the overall styles. And if you were to scroll down, you can see that there's also steps that we want the Gemini to follow for the component design, the UI mockup build, and responsiveness. So with that being said, let's try to send this message and see how Gemini respond to that. 
All right, so here, first thing first, you can see is start to define a plan, right? So here's a plan, component breakdown, scaffolding, UI constructions, the responsive design. And then here for each step, you can see that these are the things that they're going to do, right? The search bar, the conversation item, the user avatar, the chat panel, these are the things that they're going to create. And here you can see it gives us the first action, which is to write a file. So this is the file that's going to write index.html. So here I can also be able to click on the view changes and here I'm just going to open this. So you can see that here we have the HTML page that is designed by the Gemini. So you can see we have the sidebar and here I'm just going to click on accept. Okay, so once we accept it, you can see that it has successfully created the index.html and the style.css files. And the UI is now built with the specific theme and component structure and the responsiveness for both desktop and mobile. Now we can be able to open the index.html file in the web browser to see the results. So here, if we were to click on the explore, you can see that we have two files, the index.html and the style.css. So if we were to click this, you can see that we have everything built in. Okay, so now if we were to open this in the browser, you can see that this is the first mockup looks like. So you can see that it might not be look exactly the same, but at least you can see we do have the search bar here. We do have the conversation history, even though that there's no functionality for switching to different conversation lists. And here inside of this, we have our conversation history, right? We can be able to type things. We can be able to send messages. Obviously, there's no functionality, but at least we have the UI design, right? And on the right, you can see we have the contact info. And if you were just to compare this with the uh, image, you can see that it's very similar design, even though that maybe not all the UI component has added into the mockups, right? So for example, the status for each person, the active status, right? For example, the voice message or the voice icon feature is not added or the chat details for the four icons is not added, but at least it builds a foundation mockups that we can be able to ask Gemini to be able to build on top of it to get a much better result. Now, once we have our UI foundation built, now it's time to introduce another tool, which is the AI version control. Why is this so important? Well, because if we're going to have a conversation with Gemini to, you know, give instructions to build things built on top of this current design, let's say Gemini builds a different version of this, right? Or basically add additional features that we don't like, then we can always be able to use the virtual control feature to basically revert or restore back to the previous version and be able to build on top of that, right? So in that case, we're gonna introduce a new tool called YoYo, which is an AI version control. And you can see that we can be able to undo any AI mistakes with this version control. Okay, so here to install this, we're just gonna click on install for free. And based on our editor, we're gonna use Visual Studio Code. And to do this, we're just gonna go to the extension view and search for YoYo and install it. Now back to Visual Studio Code, you can see we're just gonna search for YoYo. And here's gonna be the package we're gonna install, which is an AI version control for vibe coding. So here you can see I have already installed this. And here you can see inside of our AI version control, I have already created a new version for the current code base. For version one, this is the notes that I can be able to change. And this is gonna be the notes, which is the initial version of the UI design. So I can be able to click on save and I can also be able to click on restore or preview once I have more versions. So once we have the first version, now it's time for us to improve our UI and add additional changes. So here I'm just gonna come back to Gemini, toggle on for the agent mode. So now here we're gonna ask Gemini to make the first modification which is based on the mockup PNG, we have the profile status, but the current application doesn't have that, so please add it. So if we were to look at the current application, you can see we don't have the status below the search bar, so we want the Gemini to add this. So let's send this request to let Gemini to fix this. All right, so now you can see that Code Assist has added this feature into the index.html along with the CSS for styling. So here I'm just going to accept the current changes and we can just let the agent work on this. Awesome. So once we have the agents apply those changes into those files, now we can be able to open the browser and be able to view the changes that applied. Okay, so here if we were to open the browser, you can see we have the status profile on the top left which is showing here. Obviously, that's not exactly what we're looking for, but what we're looking for is to have multiple status for different persons. So here, uh, we're just gonna come back and be able to mention that. But before we do so, we wanna make sure to save the current version. So I'm just gonna save a new version of this. So it's gonna be saving version two, so that if the next version or the next changes that Gemini applies did not meet the expectation, then we want to make sure to revert back to the version two. So here, we're just gonna say add current profile status on the top left sidebar. And we're gonna save this and let's give it a better prompt here. And to get a better prompt, I basically take the ideal photo for the mockup and also the current UI design that's generated by Gemini. And I basically pass it to a large language model to basically generate the prompt for me to make it much more better for the prompt. 
So here, this is the prompt that's generated. So here, we're just gonna send this to the agents and let it do its job. All right, so now once the agents has created those changes and apply those changes, you can see that if we were to view the changes that it made, it basically modified the index.html to add the horizontal avatar list, which is this one right here, right? And also um, add a new chat detail section, which is this one right here and then also update the style.css with the relevant styles for the new elements, okay? Now, once it has applied those changes, let's navigate to the website and see what it looks like. So now if we were to refresh, you can see we have our avatar list, right? Which is shown here. And we can also see that there's chat details that looks much more like the ideal mockups that we have here, even though that the status here still exists. Now to fix this, what we can do is we can go back to the versions. First of all, we're gonna save the current version just so that we have current version saved up, which is gonna be adding the horizontal avatar list and the chat detail section. So we're gonna save this. So now we're gonna restore back to the version that we don't have the status, which is version one. So we're gonna restore this and we're gonna click on continue. Now, the good thing about this is that it will create a new version, version four, which is the uh, restore version of version one. So it's not going to delete the version two and three because we still have that. And it's gonna add a new version here, okay? So once we've uh, basically successfully restored the version one, if we were to refresh, you can see that it restore back to the version one that we have. Now we're gonna use the same prompt that we create for version three. And this time we're gonna use Gemini to basically create that version one more time, but this time we're not gonna have the status because we're building from version one. So let's send this request to the agents and let's see what it does. Now here you can see Gemini wants us to confirm if we wanna do the implementation again, because Gemini has no idea that we have reverted back to the previous version. So here we're just gonna confirm that and let Gemini do his job. All right, so now you can see Gemini has re-implemented this feature and has applied the changes in index.html and the style.css file. Now the UI should now reflect the ideal design. So if we were to navigate back to the UI and refresh, you can see that we have the same design, but this time, because we are using version control, we can be able to revert back to version one and build on top of it. And now you can see that we don't have the profile status below the messages, but you can see that we still have the same features that we mentioned for version three. Obviously, you can also have AI to just remove that specific part, but for this demonstration, I'm just trying to demonstrate version control so that you get an idea on how this works. And back to the verge control, we're just gonna save a new version. And this time we're just gonna say add version one and version three. All right, so finally, without making this video too long, I'm just going to request Code Assist to make final changes by changing the color and themes before we move on to the next section. So here, this is gonna be the prompt. I basically just let Gemini to create the prompt for me, and then we're gonna take this prompt and pass it to the agents and to make this change for this UI design. So we're gonna send this request and let Gemini figure this out. So once the color theme has been applied, now let's go back to the browser, refresh. All right, so here you can see it has much more cleaner, simpler color themes. Awesome, so now we're gonna focus on is basically taking the code that we have, which is the HTML file and a CSS file, and we're going to convert this into a Nest.js application so that we can be able to add our additional functionalities to build this web applications. Now to do so, I basically create the prompt using Gemini. And here you can see basically the goal is to pass this instruction to the code assist and it will basically create a chat applications using the exist static HTML and CSS files into a fully functional modern Nest.js web applications. So here are the core requirements and then these are the step-by-step -step instructions. And here is the create reusable components, uh, implement the mock data, and also build the main page and make sure that we have responsiveness added inside of our application. So in this case, we're just gonna copy this prompt and come back to Visual Studio Code. We're gonna go to Gemini Code Assist and paste the prompt. And here, we're gonna make sure to select the HTML file, also the CSS file here. Okay, so that's much more specific about what we're gonna do. Okay, so once we have everything, we're just gonna send this request and let Gemini to figure this out. All right, so while I was making this video, we can see that we run out of the daily request limits for the Gemini 2.5 Pro requests. So in that case, let's take a look at how we can be able to solve this. Now, usually the way how we can solve this is we can be able to change the account because it's free for any Gmail account, right? So here, if I were to sign out, so if I were to click here, on the three dots and click on sign out. And I should be able to sign out for this account. And here I'm just gonna re-log in with another Gmail account just so that we can be able to get this working. So that's what I did. And I basically signed in with another Gmail account and I have run the same prompt again. Now you can see that we have our Nest.js application uh, set up. And what we can do is just follow a command, right? So we just run npm install. So here we're just gonna cd into, let's see what do we have in our directory, which is the app demo. 
So we're just gonna CD into app demo and do an npm install. And here we're just gonna follow this and run the npm run dev. And this should be able to start our Nest.js application. So it's gonna start on this port. So we're gonna copy this. All right, so now if I were to navigate to this application on port 3000, you can see that this is what the application looks like right now. And you can see we have our chats and list the profiles for the status. And here we have the chat list. And for each chat, you can see we can be able to navigate to different chats. And that's because we have the JavaScript functionality inside of our application. And here we can be able to click on uh, one of them, for example, and I can be able to send a message, for example, say bye. And I can be able to change to a different chat list and be able to view the conversation from there. But obviously this web application is not fully complete because we're dealing with just mock data and a lot of those data, for example, Lisa is online or this person was last active like this minutes ago. Uh, it was all mock data, but because this video is all about vibe coding UI design, so I don't want to get too much further into the functionalities or the coding part of it. But if you guys are interested to see me making another video about taking this skeleton application and be able to further improve it to make it 100% uh, functional, which has like front end, the back end, the database. If you want to see me make a video of this, please comment down below. And before we end this video, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like this video and please consider to subscribe for more content like this. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video.